They say what goes up must come down, and Digimon's combined attack and health stat DP, which stands for digital power or something like that, is no exception. There are plenty of effects, usually when digivolving, to help boost a DP upwards in order to help you swing over things and be beefy beat sticks on both your turn and your opponent's turn. In fact, DP is a requirement for Digimon to exist in the battle area, something that used to stop eggs until EXT's Mother D Reaper from being able to exist in the battle area because Digi Eggs do not have DP. Instead, it would be an exception with a beefy 15k DP with a bunch of protections to keep it safe. But what were to happen if your DP was reduced to zero? Well, I'd wager most of you already know and are here because you got hit by Lonkey at a stack though for the 15th time first check in security and just want to hear me rant about it for however many minutes. I don't blame you. But for those of you that have stumbled across this video because it's shown up in your For You or it was recommended by a friend and have no idea what you're doing here, or maybe just are in a region where you don't have to stare down yellow vaccine every single week, DP Minus is a form of removal and board control that focuses around reducing a Digimon's DP to zero or as close to it as possible to help it in a combat situation. This color, as alluded to before, is largely focused around yellow deck types. Usually vaccines or other cards that have on play or when digivolving effects, but when they aren't reducing your security attack down to zero, or instead trying to drop that DP instead. When a Digimon does go down to zero DP, it's then queued up for deletion. As long as there's no other effects that stop it from maintaining zero DP, it'll get deleted by game rule. It's crucial that it's deleted by game rule rather than card effect because it allows you to circumvent some otherwise very impressive card protections where the card, namely black cards, can't be deleted by card effects or Digimon effects. Examples of this are Raiji Ludomon from the Ragnarok Monster deck, which can't be deleted by effects at all. But what happens if it gets hit by an 8k shrink ray? Well, it just crumbles. It's not being deleted by an effect, it's actually being reduced to zero by an effect, which it's liable to. Then the game recognizes that it's on zero DP and deletes it, because you aren't allowed to be on zero DP in this game. If there's nothing that can interrupt it and put it back above zero, then the game will just clear it because it is a game rule and there's no protection against game rules. Speaking of, Shine Greymon Ruin Mode is infamous for putting a minus 5k blanket down and becoming a floodgate that affects the entire opponent's side of the board with its when digivolving and on deletion. If you were to push out a Digimon that had 5k or less DP, it would die instantly after the game recognizes that it's entered the field and the minus 5k DP blanket has reduced its DP to zero, deleting it by game rule before anything can happen. This also actually applies to on play Digimon as well. They do hit the field, but just like moving out of raising, the game's state check occurs first, preventing the on play from firing due to the body being removed prior to the effect's trigger. It's something that catches a lot of people off guard and is honestly incredibly frustrating. It does allow for some very annoying game states, where Ping Pong, otherwise known as Alterest Turbo, will see your Agumon and Gabumon get played, but their on plays won't trigger because they're deleted before they can actually resolve the effect, but it does trigger your Tamer because it does see the actual Digimon get played, allowing it to go sideways and get your memory. The same can be said for Ukomon, who coming out of raising will trigger the ability to do its effects, but it gets deleted before the effects can resolve, so it actually whips. However, the Tamer, Louis Owada, just like with the ping pong example, sees the Digimon move from raising and it gets to resolve its going sideways to get memory, despite the Ukomon not being able to do so. Are you subscribed? Do you know nearly 9,000 people saw the Digicross video and it'd be very cool if 9,000 people were subscribed to me. It only takes like 10 seconds and it actually statistically reduces your chance of bricking on your mulligan. Trust me, would a man on the internet lie to you? Digimon state checking is honestly kind of weird. It's actually exemplified very, very well in simulators. As I said before, Digimon without a DP can't exist in the battle area thanks to not having DP. But what would happen if they gained DP before an effect resolves, which at the time of writing, and definitely not at the time of recording, <laughs> the newly released Lightfang Knight for Tamer from my favorite DS game Let's players use the Light Fang Tamer Ko and Sayo, which lets you degenerate, putting the top card from the stack down to the bottom, which would leave a level 2 egg. Normally this would queue it up for deletion, but because we're not done resolving the effect, 
as it's not separated by punctuation, you actually have to fully resolve the effect before the state check can actually happen. Instead, it remains paused, which means you're allowed to digivolve your level two into a level three, and you can dodge the rosas for just a little bit longer. The actual egg deletion state check will whiff because there's no longer a level two on board. There's a level three by the time the effect is done resolving and you can continue as normal. By feeding a Coronamon or Lunamon into the proverbial sausage grinder, you can turn your Apollomon or Dianamon into a Grace Novamon without having to pay that FD6 cost. Trade Offer One barely sentient rookie Digimon for the combined expanse of the greater known galaxy for free. It is at this point in the video that I just want to also interrupt once again to thank all of the members that helped make this come out. As you know, this takes a very, very long time, which is why it is late. Uh, but these guys have been helping support it and I did want to immortalize them in these videos. So if you want to find yourself listed in a future video along the names here, then very much appreciate it. Any single tier does go a long way, but starting from the top, we have the Tommy NT and Tommy Tricks on the sticks at the ultimate tier. At the champions tier, which also gets you access to the extra podcast stuff that we have started recording. We do have L and Coffee Deus. And then at the rookie tier, who also just get gameplay early, we do have DHM, Bradley Rob, and Seb Bainbridge Coombs. I want to say a massive thank you to everyone that has been supporting me on the channel so far, but especially with these members. They actually got to see this video over a week early, so it's really, really helpful to have this. I wanted to give back to you guys. And if you want to be in the hopefully growing list of shout outs midway through these, hopefully, well received videos, then consider joining the membership and making sure that you're subscribed because that also helps. But back to the video. Timing on DP minus can be quite funny. Most protections are until the end of your turn and for better or for worse, most DP minus effects tend to be for the turn. Meaning if you can make it to the end of the turn, your DP minus will reset for the most part. Blackwall Greymon X was an infamously strong wall of a deck due to having protection against DP minus reductions and made more consistent by the new Metal Greymon X antibody, which showed up the holes in its defense, giving it protection against the Digivolve and DP minus until the end of your opponent's turn, allowing it to check security for pretty much no fear. As a Wyvern's Breath out of security or in response from the hand isn't going to be doing anything thanks to its protection, keeping it safe for the turn. But due to its protection only lasting until the end of the opponent's turn, I say only, like, lasting until the end of your opponent's turn, therefore giving protection into the next turn isn't just still obscenely strong. But, if you had a way to outweigh the protection, you could theoretically catch it. This also technically applies to Alphamon, where the limited Doru Greymon gave a full turn of protection into the opponent's turn, but the example famously actually came up at US Nationals. Legend has it that Megalospark was cast on an immune Black War Greymon, which said, Nah, -uh, I can't hear this Megalospark unaffected. The player then doubles down and casts a second one, which the Black War Greymon player, maybe sweating profusely, is wondering why they were double down on something that didn't work. Its protection ends at the end of the opponent's turn, and Megalospark, which conveniently has its DP minus lingering until the end of the opponent's turn, Shrunk it into a corn cob with a double dose of minus 8k at the start of the opponent's turn where the protection had faded. Unfortunately, this was done off stream, but the fact that it required a judge to be called over because the Black or Greymon player was unconvinced that this interaction existed and worked, calling them over to verify it kind of helped the legend spread quite quickly. It's something to keep in mind that as the game evolves and there's more and more pervasive shrink abilities, such as Bancho Leomon's Suspension minus 4k and the EX5 Etamon Taunt and Shrink, both lasting until the opponent's turn. Bancho Leomon is actually incredibly annoying. Because it's an all turns when a Digimon is suspended and it hits you until the end of the opponent's turn, means that you can suspend it with its on play when Digivolving, hit something for minus 3k, skirt any protection going into the next turn, and then when blocking during their turn, it's a new turn, so it fires again and puts the next 4k shrink on for that double shrink. 
if your protection is only during your opponent's turn. Usually shrink is only useful at clearing one big stack or a bunch of little stacks. The developers for the most part tend to segregate the use of DP neg. Notable examples would be the limiting of Sunrise Buster down to one. By reducing it to one, it allowed for them to design more focus cards instead of this overpowered catch-all. Shining Blast, which is more strict on what tamer it lets you cheat out, also spreads the damage across three specific targets and you can't stack them, whereas Final Shining Burst just nukes a single stack. What this does mean is if players recognize there's high shrink on a single stack, players can instead choose to go wide with the otherwise submissive and shrinkable. That said though, there are decks that get around this with just sheer flexibility. Sukuyamon and its line have inherit effects that do minus 2k when an option card of two or more cost is played, with the Renamon, Cubimon, and Taumon depending on the version. This lets you stack your DP minus onto a single target in addition to Sukuyamon's minus 3k effect. Sukuyamon's effect isn't even once per turn, meaning you can be even more flexible with your target calling and do some serious damage over various chips. This is especially potent when the card itself being used does DP minus. For example, Megalospark, as we keep using as an example, does neg 8k by itself. Coupled with a Sukuyamon effect, this now goes to 11, and with a perfect stack of minus 2k shrinks on BT10 Renamon, EX2 Cubimon, and pretty much any Taumon, this totals at 17k DP minus on a 4 cost option providing you have the Yellow Tamer in play, which, let's be real, if you're playing Sukuyamon and trying to win the game, you certainly will have. Lord Nightmon, a Digimon that really popularized DP minus, allows you to go with a wide range of specialized shrink with its option, with its signature option, Spiral Masquerade. This four cost option lets for each Digimon you have in play, you get to pick a target and do minus 3k. Unlike Shining Blast, you can select the same target multiple times if you have the Digimon to do so. This card was basically retrained with Promo Nightmon, who's on play when Digivolving, does the same thing but only to a single Digimon. This means in a situation where you get to go 3 to 4 wide using Lord Nightmon's effects, Spiral Masquerade can shoot several targets or cut down a stack by minus 12. A free played Nightmon promo could also just nuke a stack from Orbit doing the same thing. This gets even more insane with EX4's Heaven's Judgment which is one of the few times that they've actually broken away from this tall or wide shrink design. Instead, it does 6k DP neg. Then you get to recast that ability for every color you have in play. This was introduced alongside Alliance decks, which would often be green yellow, green black, or green purple. With a full board, you'd be hitting some insane numbers as high as 30k with the right settings, spread as wide or as narrow as you want. In fact, most of the top tier threats of BT16 can make stellar use of this card, and Ukamon running around as a white source has never been more relevant. Meaning that if you're playing on board, absolutely nothing is safe. Armors have made pretty decent use of this card, often being blue, yellow, or blue, green, to hit for 18k off of this card. But with the help of our favorite alien buddy, those numbers climb to an obnoxious 24k. Made even sillier with the BT16 secret rare Magnemon X antibody Jaundice Edition, it itself is three colors, which facilitates a minus 24k smiting of the non-believers just for existing on the board. Shrink can actually have some unintended interactions that set up some unavoidable instant kills. BT1's Blast Fire changes the original DP of one of your opponent's Digimon to 3k until the end of their turn. DP buffs and debuffs are then reapplied after. Setting a once high DP value to 3k really does hack at the kneecaps of a once powerful Digimon. Sukuyamon is a particular abuser of this card. Shoutouts to our local judge, Terry, who put, put this in my line of sight. Due to the neg 3 that we talked about before, set their DP to 3k, neg 3, problem solved. Funnier still is Sukumon off the back of Flame Hellsight, which also sets up a similar situation. Notorious for being able to clear level 4s with its minus 6k DP, and then playing a 6k or less from trash without playing the cost and not limiting it to angels or fallen angels or anything like that. Unlike Blastfire, this card actually has a security effect which reads the exact same, so you could ruin a board with the very same combo during your opponent's turn. King Sukumon's on play when digivolving, if they have a 16 cards in trash, or you have 3 Sukumon in your trash, can turn an opponent's Digimon into a Sukumon token which is white and has an original DP of 3k. We'll ignore them being white for now as it's not relevant to the video, but being named Sukumon and being 3k is incredibly important here. If they're turned into Sukumon by name, this can turn off Inherits. 
The Agumon line tends to have all of their all turns DP increases based on whether they have Greymon or Omnimon in the name. Now being named Sukumon, that beefy 24k War Greymon is suddenly a very pitiful 3k Sukumon, making it pretty easy to clear. In fact, Flame and Hellscythe will just do the full combo by itself. The lingering 6k will hit once again after the original DP was adjusted, killing it off in the same action. This is due to DP positive and negatives being separate from changes to original DP, which are then just reapplied after as if they were there the whole time. This manages to turn King Sukumon into an instant kill spell that can handle basically anything as long as the target Digimon isn't immune to Digimon effects or just DP minus in general. There are a couple of instances where DP minus doesn't actually always work for the caster though due to these rules processing is actually not working in their favour. Just like we saw Flame Hellscythe be used as just a fantastic kill spell by bringing back King Sukumon and then shrinking, because the card doesn't finish its rules processing before trying to play a card it means that if you have a floodgate down such as Pomimon which prevents players from playing Digimon by effect the minus 6k will hit the Pomimon, but it will be queued up for deletion, but won't be deleted before the card's effect fully resolves. So you will not be able to play the Digimon off of Flame Hellscythe because the Pomimon hasn't died yet. Instead, it's sitting on the field at 0 DP, still activating its effect to block the player from playing a Digimon by effect. That's something to note. Also, in an instance coming up for BT16, just to future proof this video a bit, when you're facing off against the Rapidmon X antibody, whose all turns effect applies a minus 4k blanket to any Digimon that is suspended. Digimon such as Sunflowmon from BT13 that suspend itself in order to reduce the evolution cost will get hit by that minus 3k when they suspend themselves for their effect. But you do have to resolve its effect fully, such as evolving a Digimon and reducing its cost, meaning you could suspend it to evolve itself into a brand new Digimon such as Lilymon Ace. And then after that, the new DP is hit with a minus 4K. While Sunflowmon will be at zero DP whilst activating its effects due to the suspension, because of rules processing, the full effect does go off without a hitch, meaning you can feed it into the grinder to get yourself a lovely vegan Bloom Lord sausage, or you can use it to evolve into a level five and kind of dodge the 4k blanket if the thing you're evolving into has more than 4k DP. This is actually one of those instances where you get to see how complex the Digimon card game can actually be rather than just, you know, having a basic removal that deletes something. Having something that messes with the numbers and lets you flex your quick thinking skills and your mathematical prowess can sometimes just be underappreciated. Especially when the maths isn't just how big is my security die. So yeah. That's my video on DP minus and a little aside on how wonky state checks can be and some unexpected, maybe unintended consequences of the two going hand in hand. I personally think if Bandai looks for more interesting ways for you to stack DP minus, the mechanic should be here to stay. The fewer effects that are just my security is bigger than yours, your Digimon is now gone, the better and more combo oriented pieces like the Sukuyamon line where you get to cover these wide ranges of board states due to setting up correctly, I think are incredibly healthy for the game and that's where actual player skill really can be fleshed out. For now, Yellow Vaccine will continue to hold a DP minus in its clutches and send a cold shiver across anyone that checks their security without a game plan and just ruin the day of any armor players like myself within a 10 foot radius. If you want to support these videos and see them before anyone else, you can join the list of members that we did uh, allude to earlier. And if that has updated at any point before this comes out, then there will be a panic re-record with list of people. But yeah, genuinely, I do want to put these out more frequently. I am still trying to do them once a month, but everyone's support goes a long, long way. If you want to make sure you never miss any gameplay, make sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell so I'm always in your inbox three times a week minimum. And of course, go watch the podcast. We're doing, we're back to doing it weekly. And if you're watching it live, you'll be able to play Lethal Living or now that that stream has happened, Memory Gauge the Room as two of our live game shows. And if you just support any of our projects, especially the podcast here on YouTube, Twitch, Apple Podcasts and Spotify, it goes a long way. But until next time, y'all, as always, have yourselves a damn good one.